Right, before I start this video, I'm going to say two things. One, my hair really needs doing is actually getting, I'm actually getting a haircut this Wednesday. I mean, it'll be done by the time this video is uploaded, but anyway, that's why my hair, and also I did a hair mask, so it's just like really fluffy, not looking its best, but I wanted to film today, so there we go. And second of all, I kind of over plucked this eyebrow, um, so I've filled it in, but I used a different product to normal, so I've washed my makeup brush, so I couldn't use my normal like, eyebrow, eyebrow shadow like um, brush thing. So yeah, now I just feel like my eyebrows look really weird as well, so we're just off to a great start really. Um, <laughs> but anyway, I'm still going to film this video regardless, so today I'm going to be filming 10 ways you can, avo you can avoid or prevent university burnout. Um, I think this is something all students probably experienced, whether it's been at A-level, GCSE or at university. I mean, I even dropped out because I got so burnt out at uni, so yes, I feel like I'm quite an expert on this topic. Um, I hope you like the video, please like and subscribe if you want to, and let's get started. So, I feel like burning out can kind of start for a variety of reasons. One, you might be doing too much uni work, so you just feel exhausted from studying all the time, or you might be the complete opposite, you might be out socialising all the time, so you feel really burnt out and exhausted, and just feel like you can't cope anymore, or it could be a mixture of the both those things just overloading your schedule so you just feel like there's just so much going on all the time and you just feel exhausted and yeah that's kind of my reasons for burning out when I've experienced it personally. I'm going to get into 10 ways you can prevent this so the first one is sticking to a routine and keeping it 9 till 5. So when it comes to academic work I would say honestly treat university like a 9 to 5 job. Like I know a lot of people say this but it really really works and it does make you feel like less like things are less chaotic so obviously with the university you're probably only going to be in what maybe three four days a week maximum um and then you might think oh that's like loads of spare time but then because you, you've got other work to do outside of the hours you just feel like you, you've always got to be working um which is really not the case you shouldn't be working all the time constantly because as i said you will just get exhausted like i remember when i was studying psychology like where i didn't really understand my lectures i'd get up at like seven in the morning go through the whole lecture for that day do all the notes before i even went to the lecture and i was just i like no wonder I was so tired back then. Um, so yeah, I would say keep to a schedule. So I literally swear by having a weekly planner. Like even now I'm not at uni and I've got one on the go. Um, obviously it's not as full because I haven't got the like, uni stuff to do. But I have been doing like an online course. And obviously I like to plan my YouTube and Instagram stuff. So yeah, I'd say when it comes to like courses or academic work, keep it 9 till 5. So, just, so it kind of puts in your head that like, right, I'm going to work between these hours. And these are the only hours I can dedicate to my work. Um, I mean, if you're someone that can't get up that early or prefers work, working later, I just adapt your kind of schedule to whatever works best for you. Like when you're working hours are best. Like for me personally, I would like doing between ten and four. That's quite good for me. I think because I've just like grown up, or, like always finishing school or college like four p.m. So after that time, I'm kind of like need to wind down, sort of thing. And I'm just as I'm tired. So yeah, just it doesn't have to be a full like eight hour day, but I think just set aside like your specific hours that you like work best in next one is schedule in your friends i know when it comes to the deadline time you just want to get on with it and work on everything um but i would definitely say make sure when you do have your like academic schedule in or whatever make sure you write down when you're seeing people like i've got written down here when i'm seeing people as well this week um yeah and also i think it's really good to if you have something written down or typed up it does make it very visual to see what you're actually spending your time doing and if, if your whole schedule just like uni work or your part-time job or whatever as I said, you're just going to get so exhausted and just think that your life is, like, really bad because you're not seeing your friends. So, yeah, definitely make sure you actually, like, take the time to schedule and seeing your friends. Like, I know if, even if you live with them, you might just think, oh, but I see them every day. Like, actually make time to, like, do something fun, like, whether that be going out for a meal or going out clubbing or going out during the day or just going for a coffee date. Like, actually get out of where you live because, again, that just is a change of scenery. It'll freshen, it'll, like, refresh you a bit. And you can even do it during your 9 to 5 day, like, maybe if some of your friends are on campus at lunchtime like go and see them like as i said just change up your like um setting as well because as i said it'll just keep your brain engaged and stuff and yeah it's just good to change your scenery next one is have break from i can't even read my own writing <laughs> break from university bubble so i think it's really important to maybe every like few weeks or every month so maybe either have one of your friends or family come up and visit you or go home to your family and friends um I think with university especially, where you're obviously living there, doing your work there and stuff, like it does feel like your whole life is just in one city and it's really, really not. Um, if your friends live at other unis, go and visit them. As I said, the change of scenery will really help with your mental health. 
and yeah even just spending time with different people even in, in your city you get a different perspective on things and yeah I definitely feel like at deadline time you can really feel like you're really kind of trapped sometimes but as that's really not the case just try and visit someone different from your university kind of bubble as I always call it and again it'll really would just refresh you next one is exercise the exercise is so important it's something I've really discovered in the past year or so um, I was never really into sport at school like at all I hated it but um, now I really enjoy running and the gym I don't I haven't gone to the gym recently just because coronavirus um, but yeah just find some form of exercise you enjoy I will link below in my fitness video of like, how I found stuff I enjoyed um, but like on YouTube there's so much free stuff of like what exercises you can do that I really find like I really recommend Mad Fit's like um, pop like dance routine ones they're really fun to do but as I said, it just keeps your mind off your screens, it takes your mind away from university work, it's good for your body, good for your mind, like as I said, exercise is so important, or even if you want to stick to like a workout routine, maybe just go for a walk every day, again, like it refreshes your brain, it gets like fresh air into you, yeah, very, very important. It's time for yourself, I know I just said about seeing your friends, but I think it's equally as important to just schedule in relaxing time for you, whether that means going to bed maybe a bit earlier just so you can read, or watch videos on your phone or whatever I think it's so important just to have time to yourself because I think with the university obviously you'll like especially in your first year you'll be living with like a group big group of people that be that can be quite a lot for some people like for me personally I'm quite a big introvert so I do need my alone time um so yeah but you can also do this you don't have to be in your room doing this. again you could go running on your own go to the gym on your own like I, I quite like using the exercise for that aspect of my life again because I can just spend time on myself working on my body working on my mind and yeah just like once I go back and see my friends, I'm like all refreshed again. So yeah. Next one is do work in a separate place to where you relax. So <laughs> literally my desk is over there where I did all my uni work when I was at home. And I'm sat on my bed right now. So literally when I was in like the heat of deadline season, whenever I had like a little 10 minute break, I would get away from my desk and sit on my bed and watch YouTube or something. Like as I said, just keep things, don't do work in your bed. It's so bad for your brain because like, you just won't be able to switch off when you fall asleep. Um, yeah, personally I do prefer going into university or going into the library to do work, but obviously I didn't have that option when I came home because of coronavirus. But yeah, wherever you work, whether you're doing uni at home or in your university city, I would say just make sure you have a separate place for where you work to where you sleep. Again, very good for your mind. The next one is food and drink. Obviously it's really, really important to keep refueling your body with healthy food and again, eating regularly is so much better for you than like not eating at all throughout the day and then eating loads at night. So again, you're just like, I think... There's sort of a lot of research come recently saying it's a lot better if you to actually eat a bigger meal in the middle of the day, which it makes more sense because if you think about it, your most active hours of the day are in the morning and in the afternoon when, like, when you're working. Um, so yeah, I would definitely make sure you like have a decent lunch on you, especially if you're having a long university day. Um, and yeah, because obviously when you're eating at home like in the evening, you, you're not going out anywhere, you're not doing anything, so you don't need a load of food in the evening. So um, I always try and have my dinner before 7pm as well, just so... Like a good two, three hours before I go to sleep, like I'm not just full up on food and like full of energy. So, yeah, so make sure you're taking time to eat and drink lots of water and you'll feel a lot healthier in yourself. Um, number eight, obviously, if any of these things aren't really working for you, please speak out to someone if you're like struggling with maybe feelings of like hopelessness or like depression or anxiety. I know when I was like extremely burnt out, um, I did have to go to the doctor because, as I said, I just wasn't really coping very well with life. Um, yeah, as I said, I got the help I needed, returned back to university much healthier and happier. Um, so yeah, there are so many resources available. I'll link some down below. But yeah, your best place to start is your GP. So yeah, if you're really struggling with like your mental health or physical health, make sure you go to a doctor. The next one is stay off your phone before you go to bed and mute notifications. So to be honest, a lot of notifications on my phone are muted. I'm, like, I'm the sort of person, my phone is always on silent. So <laughs> uh, probably not the best thing in emergencies, but yeah literally my phone i think has been on silent for the past like three years but um a lot of group chats as well i do mute the notifications just because it's a lot of things for your brain to take in especially like first thing in the morning it's just like oh my god um but yeah when i go to bed like usually i'll watch like tv for an hour or so and i won't have my phone on me at all i'll just like leave it to the side um and then when i actually go to sleep i will put my phone out of like eye shot my therapist actually told me this um so yeah like if you do charge your phone at night or whatever um, make sure your phone isn't in your eye line because then like your brain won't be thinking of to like check it because like as I said you won't even see it like even when you go to sleep you can like register where it is but if you if it's not in your eye line like your brain won't be thinking about it as much so yeah 
definitely be aware of that and obviously most apps do have like nighttime settings on them now so make sure you use those at night because then it's not so bright in your eyes and just stimulating your brain and the final one is find a hobby you love so obviously you probably know my hobby my main hobby is social media and youtube so again this is just a really nice like creative outlet for me there's no pressure on it it's just me doing my own little thing um obviously if you like youtube instagram isn't for you you can find something else to do so maybe join a society or I don't know, maybe the gym could be your hobby as well, again, linking to exercise, but yeah, just find something you like doing in your free time, maybe with your friends as well, if you want to do something like that, um, but yeah, as I said, it's really good to have something other to focus on than just university work, because you will just drive yourself insane if you're just doing university work all the time, constantly. <laughs> Those are my 10 ways of avoiding university burnout, I hope you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe if you want to, and I will be filming lots more university content in the upcoming months so make sure you subscribe for that and yeah i will see you soon bye